Well, from the very beginning, Dr. McGeorge has been inundated with questions about the coronavirus vaccine. Whether it's issues with side effects or when it's okay to take off the Band-Aid, the doc answers them all, and they never stop coming, by the way. You ever notice that? And we appreciate that you never stop answering them, Frank. So let's start today with this round with a question about breathing issues. Yeah, Karen and Jason. So Javon, one of our local four insiders, asks, do you know how the vaccine would affect someone who's asthmatic? I'm leaning towards taking it, but still need some more information about it. So Javon, having asthma is an important reason you would want the protection that the vaccine offers. There is absolutely no indication that the vaccine is less effective or a problem in people with asthma. And frankly, I would strongly encourage you to get vaccinated. Now, here are some more viewer questions. Gloria asks, I've been on an immunosuppressant for over a decade. How can I check if I have COVID-19 antibodies after receiving both doses of the COVID vaccine? At this time, there is no reliable way to routinely get tested for immunity following vaccination, but your point is an important one. There is more research indicating that transplant patients, people on medications for inflammatory bowel disease, and chemotherapy patients, for example, do not have as strong a protective response to the vaccines. In fact, a recent paper specifically found patients on Remicade had a less robust antibody response after the first dose of the vaccine, but they found the second dose gave an important boost. The two important takeaways are that the second dose is important and if you are immune suppressed, even after full vaccination, you should remain cautious about distancing and mask use. Now a viewer asks, I'm breastfeeding my daughter and I'm about to get the second Pfizer next week. I was wondering if antibodies would be passed to my daughter through the breast milk and if so, how long that would take to be in the breast milk. Also, how long would antibodies be passed in the milk? A paper published in JAMA looked at exactly that question. They found antibodies were passed through breast milk and were significantly elevated at two weeks after the first vaccine. The shared antibodies remained elevated, and at six weeks, 65.7% of breast milk samples still tested positive for antibodies. Now, the study couldn't say whether these antibodies were protective to the infant, but they do have the potential to be. Now, finally, DeAndrea asks, what effect does the vaccine have on people with diabetes? So, DeAndrea, diabetes is a specific risk for developing more severe COVID. And honestly, everyone with diabetes should definitely go out and get vaccinated as soon as possible. Back to you.